Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and I am back once again. This time it is for a first contact entertainment game that is not Firewall. This is going to be all about the Solaris off-world combat gameplay reveal that was revealed in the upload viewer showcase a couple of days ago. Didn't get to cover it then, but I wanted to come back cover it now, like run through the trailer. Let's see if we can analyze this, pick up on some details that maybe you might not see on your first look and see if there's anything worthwhile talking about. I am just after analyzing the firewall trailer, so I'm gonna to have to edit that, upload us, edit this, upload us, uh, so these videos are gonna be separate. But I'm gonna be covering both these games. Of course, Solaris is becoming to Oculus first on in August, which is very soon, but it is planned to also make an appearance on the PSVR this year. And of course, you know, we've only got six months left in the year, so it's not too far away either, it can't be. So that's why I wanna cover Solaris on this channel too. Now, of course, Full disclosure, I am community moderator for First Contact Entertainment, but look, if I see something I don't like, I'm going to say I don't like this. Uh, first of all, I'll say I prefer the Firewall style to the Solaris style, that speaks to me more, but I'm also happy to have a bit of variety. Variety is the spice of life. This is futuristic kind of Farpoint style to us, and I love Farpoint, so I'm not going to write this off because, you know, it's got the different aesthetic, if you know what I mean. Anyway. Without further ado, let's just jump right into the trailer. Let's see what we can see. So first contact with the new logo splash screen. Very nice, very fancy. It fits the theme of Solaris, which is kind of all hologrammy stuff. So in case you haven't seen Solaris, I guess I should mention that it is like a virtual reality arena shooter. So even within the game's lore, if it has lore, I don't know if you call it that, it is virtual reality within virtual reality, if you know what I mean. And you will see this in the gameplay. I'll point out the the glitches and what have you that will kind of display that this is not the real world you're looking at. So, First Contact Entertainment have La Castlevania on their team. That's the guy who did John Wick 1, John Wick 2. Frank mentioned him in the last Firewall stream that they did. Uh, so it's safe to say he's probably done the music to this tune. You can kind of hear the firewall -y ishness to it which i guess is his kind of signature so you can kind of hear him in this song already okay so this is the very first actual gameplay we're seeing here where do we start here okay so let's talk about the number two here and this kind of barrier that's going around uh this kind of indicates to me especially if it goes down to one yes it does but imagine when you spawn into the map first you get like placed and a little holding cell or a holding pin uh, that you can't move from until the timer reaches zero. Um, I'm not sure what the significance of that is gameplay wise, uh, but as you can see, timer running out here matches up with the barrier leaving. Now there is other things to look at here and obviously we should take notes. Alpha gameplay footage, so this is still alpha footage. Whatever you're seeing here might not be indicative of the final release, especially the final PS Viewer release because this is coming to PC first, what we're seeing here is probably PC fuzzage. So let's look at the hood. Down here we got your health on the left, it looks on the right here, it looks like you got armor. Now it seems that the armor part of the hood is completely empty. Uh, so I imagine armor is something you pick up, something you find on the map and recharge. Uh, I'm not too sure about health, if that regenerates or if you find health packs, maybe we'll find out that later. Uh, you can see a red thing over here as well in the distance. Uh, it appears to be a pickup. I wonder if it's health, like a red hologram thing. Uh, that's how you'll be picking things up in the game. We'll see that a bit later. Up top then we got the timer and we've got scores. So this is for your team and the enemy team. So probably gonna have to hit a score limit or maybe it's the highest score when the time runs out. Maybe probably both if you don't reach the score limit. So here, this is how you'll be picking up your weapons. Uh, you're not going to be picking a loadout before you enter the match, I don't think. I think the focus is going to be on, you know, learning the location of certain weapons. Like maybe you've got a, a favorite weapon. Maybe this is your favorite weapon. You kind of want to learn the map, learn where this particular weapon spawns, get there as quick as you can, grab us. Uh, I'm not sure how it works in terms of if I grab the weapon, does that mean the enemy can't grab us or can everyone grab us? Is it something that needs to recharge? Uh, I guess maybe we will see. So the first thing you'll notice when you're actually on the move is just how quickly you move in this game. Compare this movement to Firewall and it's like three times faster, four times faster, I don't know. Uh, but much, much quicker. And a lot of people did find Firewall very, very slow. And if you're one of those people, this could be the game for you rather instead. So while as different as this game is from Firewall, 
uh, almost completely. There is still a lot of firewall DNA and it's not just in terms of the sound, but in terms of it's a 4v4 online shooter. So that's like, it still has that basic skeleton and it builds on from that, if you know what I mean. But if you're looking at these guys here, you're going to probably notice you're not seeing faces. Um, these are all kind of, I don't want to say generic looking, but these are very, they're just like avatars. You know, this is what you go into. So don't expect to be picking specific people like you do in Firewall. There's no Okoros. There's probably not going to be skills for specific people. You just pick your character, but that's going to open it up for like a lot more customization, I would imagine. So I'm not sure if we get a look at this, but we will see, I'm sure ways to customize how these guys look uh, hopefully the more customization the better so yeah we seem to be so those guys were in red these guys are in blue i wonder is it always red team blue team or is it just that these guys are customized differently i guess we will wait and see Moving quickly here uh, a couple of things i've heard people saying about this map in particular is that it looks kind of bland and i would agree that it's not like super you know Intricate in terms of details. It's all very geometric shapes. It's all kind of flat uh, But I would say this is probably just one map uh, It does fit the tone of the game like futuristic. It does have that futuristic kind of vibe I'm hoping we'll see a lot of horizon in the maps But as far as I can tell this map is just one map uh, in this gameplay demo anyway that we see Now this is interesting here. There is a zone marked and it's clear it's white it's so the other one was green or it was like yellow and then it turned to green when it was okay to go through this one has a 20 second countdown on us i wonder is it like a control zone i think it might be a control zone that you want to get in there and while you're in that zone and while your team controls us you're earning points uh, i'm guessing the inclusion of the timers one here one here indicates that once this timer is up this zone closes and maybe another one opens up somewhere else in the map so that you're always kind of moving like imagine in firewall if the laptop was teleporting around the place that's kind of a way to keep things fresh keep everyone moving uh, and it would fit in nicely with the kind of fast pace of the game so what was that okay so what we see here is a bit of a slide maneuver. They're running into these enemy guys. You can see they're shooting their guns. And of course, their guns don't shoot bullets. This is like futuristic virtual reality. Within virtual reality, they're shooting some kind of like lasers or photon beams or some, some shit like that. I don't know. Uh, but this guy, the player character here, runs at them. And he does like a slide maneuver while he's dodging. And then he comes up again and starts blasting while he's taking damage. Now, of course, this is not something you've not seen in like Call of Duty or a game like that, but it's like a fair cry from Firewall. Like it's kind of acrobatic, you know, doing a slide, sprint, slide again or whatever. Uh, that's like a big change. It should, this game should feel really different to Firewall. So eight player online multiplayer shooter, which is what First Contact does best so far. Okay, I think he just picked up some armor there. Yeah. So you can see this blue hologram here, his armor is at half, and he does a slide into it, and boom, his armor is all the way up now. And interestingly, the number 5 has popped up here, I wonder did he get XP for picking that up? When he slides into that, 5 pops up, wait, let me keep playing. Okay, it says utility, so 5 utility plus, so I don't know if that's XP, is utility their version of XP in this game? Uh, you got XP for picking up armor. I'm not too sure, uh, but worth pointing that out. And another weapon pick up here, a different weapon this time. Uh, it's going to be really hard to tell what kind of weapons do what because they're not traditional weapons. They're not based on real things. I imagine these are all original designs from First Contact Entertainment. So yeah, it's like, I guess it kind of looks shotgunish with the way this kind of looks like maybe you'd pump it, but I'm sure when he shoots it, it's probably just going to be a beam of laser light coming out. So I don't know. Again, he picked up a weapon. He got the 5 plus utility. Control the point. Okay, so that's... From what I understand, it does have the single mode. Very similar to Firewall in that Firewall just had contract mode. This seems to have control the point. Will they have more modes in the future? We'll have to wait and see. So yeah, I'm just watching this zone here. So the one that we pointed out earlier on that had the clock on. It's the same color. It still has that white border. But I don't see the clock. I don't see any clocks on the outside, which is kind of interesting. Maybe the timers only appear uh, at a certain stage. 
Uh, but something else to point out here is that we are using a grenade launcher, I believe. So yeah, he fires the grenade. It's about to hit the ground here. And then boom, and it's shabs. Damon shabs with the double kill on the grenade launcher. Um, so, were these guys hurt already and that grenade just finished them off or did that grenade blow them up to bits with like one hit? Uh, are we going to see a return? A return of the grenade launcher spam from Firewall. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but interesting to note the way you die in this game. Bodies don't fall to the ground, they kind of freeze mid-animation, mid-ragdoll, and then they kind of dissolve away, which I, I think looks really cool, but it's kind of... It kind of points to that, you know, virtual reality. Within virtual reality, aesthetic glitches, computery kind of futuristic stuff going on. As you can see, he's dissolving here. Shabs kills this last remaining guy, or maybe this guy does. Now it's Shabs again, killing Justin and taking him out of the game. Well, I won't say taking him out of the game because I do believe it is all about respawning. This is not one life, so this is another difference from Firewall. You respawn in this game. Uh, so I imagine the timer is probably five minutes. And then you gotta hit a certain score, or you have to have the most score, or the highest score, before the clock runs out. Whichever happens first. We see getting a kill here. 100 XP plus 50. Uh, kind of very similar scoring to Firewall. Yeah, kill plus 50. So yeah, we see the slide in action again. Uh, this one here. This red one again. I'm still not really sure what that red one is. I thought it might be health. Maybe it is health, but uh, I'm not too sure. And then we got a yellow one over here. This looks like a weapon. So the yellow ones are weapons. Blue ones are armor. I suspect red is health, but maybe it's something else. And now we have this other thing in play here in the HUD. We've got this, these two red bars that have filled up. So the enemy team got 70. This player team's only on three. So I wonder the more score goes up, do these bars fill up? Or is this something else? Uh, I wonder, is it just like a visual indicator? of like a progress bear, basically. We see another grenade uh, absolutely dissolving this lad here in the middle. Just basically lots of quick cuts, lots of action. They really want to emphasize that this is, you know, boom, 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 explosions, fast pace. This is Quake, this is not Firewall. This is, you know, something very different. I think they do a good job of showing the differences. Uh, I see. Just want to go back here again. Is this a handgun or a one-handed weapon? It seems to be. There is a sidearm. It looks like that looked like a one-handed weapon to me. Although, because these weapons are like super futuristic and you know crazy designs or whatever, it might not be. So that was a rocket, a rocket or a grenade that just smashed into this person here. And took them out of us. Same with that one. So that seems to be a one-hit kill, whatever that weapon is. Is it like a rocket launcher? So yeah, boom. And then... Shabotage appears on the screen, which I believe is the name of one of the players, Damon Shabs, obviously, but... Uh, and he's a developer at First Contact, and he was the game director for 4, uh, Firewall Zero Hour. I imagine he's the same here again. So the fact that the name appears on the screen is kind of a little bit confusing to me. Um, I wonder, is this just your view? This is what it looks like when you die? I'm beginning to think now that that's probably what it is. So yeah, this is probably just a view of how you die. So this guy is shooting. This is Damon Shabs over here, blasting him with a rocket or whatever he's shooting him with. Uh, the name of the player who kills you pops up on the screen and your view kind of dissolves into these, you know, cubes. And you dissolve as well. It's gonna be cool to see your own body dissolving. And then it says, Athlon ejected. So Athlon is not the player who was killed here. The player who was killed according to the kill feed is the game show, which is Frank, I think. So it's interesting that it says Athlon ejected. I wonder, is Athlon like the red team or the blue team or something like that? Or is that their futuristic way of saying athletes? A virtual reality athletes, I don't know. And there it is. Solaris, off-world combat. New logo. Looking pretty slick. Coming August 2020 to Oculus. Uh, so I'm guessing they've got some kind of deal with Oculus. And then... Coming 2020, so no specific month. But it is coming to PS4, VR, sorry. Uh, this year. 
And now what's interesting about this and what should have a lot of people excited about this, I think, is that so Firewall Zero Hour is owned by Sony. So PlayStation owned that brand. It's considered a first party title. Um, so when that game released and a lot of people had a lot of questions, if they had issues, there was ma matchmaking issues and all that kind of stuff. Uh, first Contact Entertainment, they always seem to have like their hands tied. They were only able to talk a little bit. And that is the main reason for that is because Sony basically they can't say anything that's going to make Sony look bad. So the best the best thing in these situations is to say nothing at all. So that's kind of why they're very silent when it comes to Firewall. Uh, some of the time, not all the time. Obviously, they they share stuff too. But sometimes you feel like they don't share as much as you'd like them to share. And that is usually because of Firewall. Because they can't promise things that they can't 100% guarantee. Or else Sony come down on them. But Solaris, as you can see in the small print here. Solaris Offworld Combat is a trademark of First Contact Entertainment, so they own this. This is their game. They can run the show however they want. If there's issues with this game, I guarantee you they're going to be way more open about talking about this game because, you know, it's their thing. They can do, they can, you know, run the ship however they want, basically. They don't answer to anyone. And I think that's exciting. I think that's cool. I do wonder, is this, like, what engine are they using on this? Is this Unreal Engine 4 again, like Firewall was? Because, you know, because the big reason that Firewall never had host migration is because it's not native to Unreal Engine 4. But we know that Solaris is going to have dedicated servers. It's, going to have, it's not going to have those issues. So I wonder, will they be using a new engine for that? Or is this just a change in decision making because they're at the reins now, basically? So yeah, that is the look on the Solaris trailer. Uh, let me know what you think about this game. Is this something that you're not interested in? Or are you just Firewall only? Uh, is this something that maybe you weren't interested in Firewall, but you are interested in this? Is this more your speed? Is this more your style? Uh, is there something I missed? Uh, let me know all this stuff in the comments below. I'd appreciate that very much. You know, are you going to get this on Oculus? Or are you going to wait for the PS VR version? I want to know all this stuff down below in the comments. And that is it for this video, lads and ladies. Thank you very much for watching. But before I end the video, let me give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. Thanks to their generosity, this channel is going to keep going. And in particular, let me give a shout out to the following. Mr. Crum himself, Pete Hawkins, Columbus Thomas III, Tradition, and Chopped. 517. Thank you for supporting me on the top tier over on Patreon. I really do appreciate that. If you want to join the Patreon too, the links will be in the description below. But if you don't, don't worry. I'll be happy with likes, subscribes, all that stuff too. And one last thing before I go, big shout out to Decepticon for letting me use his music in all these videos. I really do appreciate it. If you want to check out Decepticon's music, the links will be in the description below as well. He's on Decepticon.com. He's on Spotify, Bandcamp, all the places that you want to hear your music. So yeah. That is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Please stay moist.